Let's get back to the markets now and this big sell-off, especially in tech stocks that we continue to see on Wall Street. Let's check in with Matt Malley, Chief Market Strategist at Miller Tayback and Company. Of course, we also have with us Jared Blickery and Brian Sazi. Uh, good morning, Matt. I want to start with the tech sell-off. Um, are you bullish in the same way Goldman Sachs is saying that, you know what, these tech stocks still have a lot more to run here, even though we're seeing these, these terrible sell-offs these past few days? Well, I think they have a lot more. I say a lot more. I think they definitely have more to go on the downside before they uh, before they bounce in any kind of meaningful way. And one of the reasons is that they, they just got so ahead of themselves, both on a technical basis, but much more importantly, on a fundamental basis. Yes, as Goldman says, these are great companies. I mean, Apple Computer, Microsoft, go down the list. I mean, some people can question about Tesla, uh, but NVIDIA, all these companies are great companies. But sometimes they get so far ahead of their fundamentals, whether it be artificial reasons because of this whole situation lately with the, the call buying and, and the people talking about gamma and stuff like that. But the people are saying, hey, once that artificial selling gets moved out of the way, these stocks are come roaring back. Well, people forget that, or at least maybe don't even understand that a big part of their rallies to these uh, overvalued levels were because of this artificial buying uh, through the options market. So the fact that uh, they're coming down because of this uh, unwinding of those positions simply takes them back down or will take them back down to where they should be. So, uh, you know, these are great companies on a long-term basis, but since they got so far ahead of themselves, I think they have further to drop and they won't bounce back as quickly as I think a lot of people think they will. Matt, I remember, and I'm sure you remember too, when a thousand points down the Dow was a big deal, uh, and it still kind of is. Uh, should investors just brace for more days like this for the rest of September and even uh, ahead of the election? Yeah, I think I think they do, and 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 one of the things we do have to, I mean, geez, we, we saw this, of course, in the first quarter. I don't think we'll get that uh, anywhere near that kind of 30 to 35 percent sell-off for the simple reason that we know that the, the, the Fed is there ready and willing to uh, inject more if they need to. Uh, but I think people have also just assumed that they won't, uh, won't allow any little downturn. Well, I think the Fed, you know, they're, they're not, they have their own trading desk. They have traders. They know what they're doing. Uh, they know that pu uh, pullbacks and, and corrections are normal and healthy. We certainly saw that in the tech bubble of the late 1990s we saw some deep uh, corrections. And so uh, they're not necessarily going to step right in. But I do think we'll have uh, more of things like this, Brian, between now and the, and the election. And therefore, people who have their plans in place uh, in order to take advantage of that decline, it's something I, I talked about in the first quarter, uh, is that they're the ones who are going to do well. And the ones who don't are going to be the ones who panic and sell at the bottom rather than take advantage of, of the big dips and, 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 and see them as a buying opportunity. It's just much harder to do when you don't have that kind of plan in place. And Matt, Matt, just, just here that it sounds as if uh, you know one tip to investors is don't fear the thousand point down days on the Dow. Uh, as long as the Fed is there, who cares the Dow goes down a thousand points, even two thousand points? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, obviously, if it happens in one day, then you worry about margin calls and forced selling and, and things like that. Uh, so, you know, any kind of, you know, we would look much rather see it in an orderly fashion. The problem is in today's marketplace, but not just the, the Robinhood trader, but also with these algorithmic, you know, the algos, which are definitely momentum based. Uh, not only do they, uh, you know, they go from you know, all these buy orders. Well, not only do those flip to sell orders, but their bids, their buy orders are canceled. And that can ca cause some severe downdrafts. So, yes, we could have days like that. Uh, uh, and again, I don't think it'll be as quite as bad as it was in the first quarter or anywhere near as bad. That actually, but that doesn't mean, I mean, 10 to 15% corrections are normal and healthy. They're scary, uh, but uh, they're, they're ones that you can take advantage of if you're, you know, again, if you have a plan in place. Hi, Matt. Just want to get your take on the dollar because it has been creeping higher over the past several sessions off of, well, the Dixie's had been at a two-year low versus um, its basket of currency, but we've seen it broadly weaker for the past few months. Uh, do you think it's reversing to the upside? Where's the pain trade in this? Yeah, it's definitely to the upside. And, and one of the things that, uh, you know, even though, I, and I believe over on, on a long-term basis, the dollar uh, will, will likely go back down again and maybe even, te not just test, but even break to lower lows. Uh, the problem is, is, is much like we had in, in these tech stocks with the positioning. Everybody's on one side of the boat. Everybody was on the long side of the boat. We saw the same thing in the dollar, only, only the, the other direction, where everybody was short the dollar. And we see this in the uh, COT, the commitment of traders data, and the, uh, the, which tells you what the future the positions are for futures traders. Well, I mean, everybody was short the dollar. Everybody was long the euro. And uh, 
uh, and those positions need to be unwound no matter what the long-term fundamental situation might be. When everybody gets so severely to one side of the boat, uh, those you know people get caught off sides and they have to uh, reverse those positions. So I think you will see a further rally on the dollar. Rally on the dollar. And uh, as we've seen, uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, bode well for, for U.S. stock market, especially multinational names. Before we let you go, Matt, is there any particular name among the, the big uh, tech names that are getting slaughtered here that you find attractive right now that maybe you were looking to get into, but the valuations were a little high and these sell-offs the past few days has brought that stock down to a, a, a more reasonable uh, entry point? be perfectly honest with you, I think they all have further to go. I mean, it's impossible to catch the exact low, uh, but since they became so overbought and so overvalued, uh, I think they're going to have they're going to have to fall in a material way, uh, another five, ten percent, and in some cases even more uh, before they really bottom. But the Microsoft is, is probably the one that I like best. Uh, and, and that's the thing too: is it don't try to catch the bottom. After it falls a little bit more, nibble a little bit, and then when you start to see that flush, that washout trade, uh, then you can be a little bit more aggressive. All right, nibbling. Good advice, Matt Malley, Chief Market Strategist at Miller Tayback and Company. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Have a great one.